Traveling along a country road, the African mirror cameraman came across this tragic accident shortly after it occurred. The damaged cars bear silent testimony to the terrifying violence of the impact. Seven people were involved. One of them was killed outright. At least seven lives have been affected. It happened in a flash. It could happen anywhere. At Cape Town Castle, a parade was held at which the OC of Cape Command presented medals for service and gallantry. Bandmaster E.C. Bishton was among those decorated by Brigadier H.G. Wilmot. Service with the 2nd Battalion of the South African Police Brigade at Tobruk was recalled when B.J. Vessels received the DCM. In May 1942, his section captured an enemy gun and fired it until it was silenced by a direct hit and accounted for several enemy tanks. A guard of honor mounted by the Coast Artillery Brigade was drawn up outside the railway station and inspected by the Governor General, the Right Honorable G. Brandt von Zell. Gathered on the platform to see him off were senior Navy and Army officers and members of the Diplomatic Corps. The Governor General was leaving the Cape to visit Natal, and so, as the last farewells were said, he boarded the white train on his way to Peter Maritzburg. Let's <laughs> welcome Molly Econ, stage radio and screen star, who's been brought to South Africa by African Consolidated Theatres. Incidentally, uh, what is the correct pronunciation of your name? Is it the French, a piquant? Oh, no, that's much too saucy. It's just plain piquant. <laughs> and, and how do you like being back in South Africa? Very much. I was looking forward to this trip. We had such a grand time here before. You arrived by air this time. That's right. We had one breakfast in Hollywood, then the next one in New York, the next one in Lisbon, and the next one here in South Africa. You certainly get around eating breakfast. Wait a minute. Did you say I was getting round eating breakfast? <laughs> I'd better look out for that. <laughs> but we had a wonderful trip. We flew over the Atlantic, and then we flew over the desert, and then finally when we got here, we couldn't land for three hours because of clouds. Were you scared? Oh, no. Not until we almost had a crash in the taxi on our way to the hotel. <laughs> I noticed when you came in, you're wearing your skirt a little long. Mm -hmm. Is that a new trend? Yes. Hats are going up, and skirts are getting a little longer. <laughs> Pity. Oh, thank you. That's the best compliment I've had today. <laughs> but incidentally, speaking of skirts, do you remember a song I did here on my last visit about a dress? It went something like this. I buy a dress, a cute little dress. The silk comes from across the sea. The dressmaker says to me, it's him. Now, wait a minute. Why am I doing this for nothing? <laughs> I'll see you all later. Playtime at St. Vincent School, Johannesburg and as much noise as you'd expect from any happy youngsters in high spirits. But to them, it sounds like this. You see, every one of these children is deaf. Fortunately, cases of children being dumb are extremely rare, but deaf children can't speak because they can't hear speech. They can communicate by signs, but this is forbidden as it discourages them from trying to speak and lip read, the most important things they must learn before they can go out into the world to lead a normal life. St. Vincent's School for the Deaf takes children of all ages. Some of them are from well-to-do homes, some are not, and some are orphans. But naturally, the younger they start, the greater are their chances of success. With loving care and infinite patience, their training starts. And you'll notice that far from having any inferiority complex or shyness, the little mites absorb their lessons with a touching eagerness. Show me your arm. Show me your eyes. 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 Place, train.
What does the train say? Here, plus. Blowing the feather is only useful for some words. Sometimes they feel correct vibrations on various parts of the face with their fingers. And mirrors help them with mouth formations. Mm -hmm. Bit by bit, they build up a simple, essential vocabulary with the aid of pictures. Show me the train. Hearing aids can only help in cases where there's partial hearing. But nearly half of these children haven't enough hearing even for that. In any case, the most important thing to be learned is lip reading, which although it takes years to learn, is the most useful attribute they can achieve. As they acquire one sound, they build little words onto it. The difficult thing is to make a start. The children's general education is very satisfactory, and St. Vincent takes them up to standard eight and the junior certificate. But day after day, there's an insistence on lip reading and improvement of speech, and always that keenness to learn. One child is told to tell the class what she has been asked to do. And immediately afterwards, another child is called up to write what happened on the blackboard. But whatever they do, there's a deliberateness and an eagerness to win approval. <laughs> Nothing that can be done to enable them to take their place in everyday life is neglected. The girls learn domestic science in all its branches. Whatever happens, they must develop a complete sense of self-reliance. They even learn to deal with all the little things that so often go wrong. Sewing and needlework are extremely popular among the girls. In fact, so is anything that enables them to use their hands, particularly if it produces some tangible form of achievement. From the age of 12, the boys learn carpentry, and once again there's that wonderful application to what they're doing. Their tuition couldn't be in better hands, and they make all the furniture the school needs. Later on, they go out into the world to serve their apprenticeship in the trade, which normally takes five years. But their training here is so thorough that two years are deducted, and so soon they will qualify. Employers find that in return for a little understanding, these boys invariably give a tremendous output, because being deaf, their attention is never distracted. <laughs> Boldly accepting their one physical handicap, these children are happy, fearless, and friendly. For them, life is full of promise. For them, a mortal miracle has been wrought by a devotion to their cause, a miracle of loving care and infinite patience.